Right, it's a very, very small video when I'm at this little quiet shaded area with a stream running. Um, I just, because it was difficult to keep the camera still, I just took some photos of the deer. I, I must have taken five or six photos of them sat under trees and munching um, halfway up the hill back there. But I didn't video it because it was hard to keep the camera still. The sun right above and all that, you know. Look at this lovely tree. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if it's a, a lime or... Is it an elm? Uh, not an elm. Uh, is it a... Ash? I don't know. I need to keep carrying a little book of trees. I did look it all up last year, but I forget. This is a nice little shaded area here. Especially if you're coming back, uh, on the way back you need these, these areas to cool you off. And the sheep and that use them as well. So there's some water emerging coming down here as well, a bit of a stream. Ferns aren't very big yet. Now when I come out later in the summer, these some of these will be 10 foot tall. They're just finding their way at the moment, see? And there's a stream going down that way. All the way down to Bitnoller. And eventually makes its way out to sea somewhere. But look at these gnarled trees. This one is a type of oak. This one is, you can tell from the leaves on this one. It's a very old oak. This one. Been here for years. Weathered, bent by the wind. Providing shelter. And sensibly by a source of water. I think it's an oak. It might not be actually. It's got funny flowers on it. I do get, I must get a little leaflet to bring out with me. I mean, you can get them on your, if you had a lap, um, smart thing with a bigger screen, you could get them up, you could just tap it in. I don't tend to use any of those facilities when I'm out, because it flattens the battery too much. I use the camera as a camera. I'd have to bring another device out, and then you've got to carry more. At the moment, my bag is really, really heavy. So it's got two bottles of water and two small bottles of juice. Plus my picnic and other bits and pieces, like a first aid kit. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to go up a little bit further. There's another tree a bit further up. That's where I'm going to put my sun protector on and have a drink. But it's not quite yet. It's just up a little bit further before we join a main track and head for Bicknoller Post. Over and out. Over and out everyone. This is Sheila on the Quantock Hills near Bicknoller on a beautiful day in June, the 7th of June. Bicknoller Post. We've come up from Bicknoller Village after getting a 28 bus from Taunton Railway Station. Prior to that I had a train from Western Supermare. Before that I walked from home to the Western Supermare Station. Now if you look at the scenery it's all looking, still looking brownish with green emerging. That's because the blossom and the gorse and all that aren't out yet and the heather. When I come again another, to, another time, it might not be for a month, it will be more uh, lush again. It's growing, it's healthy, it's, the, the ferns are growing. And here we got the place where a lot, a lot of people meet. This junction point is well known by most people who walk the East Hills. Bit Noller Post. Pathways everywhere, all around, and I've done them all. I've done them all. And I've been here with Georgia, even Dave and Duncan and Georgia. I can't remember. I can't, I don't think I've, 
Yeah, I must have been here with Jolie as well. She must have been here when she was small with me. Um, I know when she first had Corin when she was 18. Me and the girls, Duncan looked, stayed and looked after Corin, and we all went out onto the Quantox. It's lovely though, isn't it? This is where a lot, a lot of people on these humps and bumps sit. Um, I've sat there myself before now. My sister Jude, there's a sign in there with a little plastic rose with a M for mum in that tree. A lot of people would sit here. My sister Jude would have sat here. She knows these hills, the back of her hand. She knows every inch of these hills. And when I'm here, I know she's walking with me. And I've just said hello to the deer. Because she could have turned into a deer, if you believe that sort of thing. Free, roaming the her beautiful hills. She loved this place. And she does have her ashes up here. Somewhere. Could have been scattered to the wind. No one's ever told me where she was scattered. I haven't asked, actually. I haven't really asked. All, I've, all they ever tell me was near a car park, and that was it. A lovely family I got. Anyway, that's that. But it just, when I'm on this walk, I've always loved this walk anyway. But it's only since she died that it's grown in its importance in many ways for me. But I don't want it to make me sad because in a way I was, I was starting to feel a bit sad when I was out here. But it's a joyous place. It's full of beauty and love. So that's what I'm going to do today. No more sad stuff. When you remember someone, it, it doesn't mean you're sad though. Just remembering them. She's been passed away now for five years. So that's Bit Noller Post, everyone. A very important reference point. Anyone doing map reading will know where that is. And I'm just going to take another small video as we progress downhill now. This is the good part of the walk. Um, I, I didn't get, I, yeah, I think I came up it last year once after I'd gone to the uh, Wordsworth house. I think I did come up, but other, other ways, I used other paths. Um, I said, but today I'm going down. I might have gone down it as well. I, I probably had more than one visit to Holford last year, but I know one of them I didn't. I came out of Crocom and did the hair naps. I did the hair naps and then came back up. Holford, Hodderscombe. So, I don't think, I don't feel like I've been down it for a year at least, or probably more. Now when I had my van, I used to come out all year round, every month. Sometimes more than once a month. In the winter, I'd be here January, February, December, March, November. But having been let down by so many bus services, and I don't, okay, it's bad enough in the heat waiting, but in, getting cold to me is worse. If a bus doesn't turn up and you're waiting two hours and it still don't turn up. Hello, beautiful tree. You probably know me. I would have passed there lots. There used to be an old tree that's gone now, a little stump that's passed on. Quite often over there we used to get deer and further over, might see some in a minute. Might see some deer in a minute. My eyes, not as good as they were, I mean they, oh, five, six years ago they were sharp. I could pick things out just like that. I still can, but not as quite as fierce as I used to be able to. But I can see the ferns are just starting to, aren't they? They're going to go absolutely crazy, the ferns and the heather and the gorse. I was, I had thought of not coming out here at all, but they have increased the bus service to one every half an hour, up till six, and then one, then there's a couple for two hours, and then the last one is two hours after the one before that, and that's it. But I do feel a bit more assured 
that there will be a bus. But of course if one half an hour one doesn't turn up, you then have to wait another half an hour. Do you know what I mean? And I, of course I always like to get to a bus early, just in case it's early. Like today the bus was three minutes early. You imagine if I had been prolonged in the station and I thought, oh yeah, get there for ten past. It was seven minutes past. It didn't wait either. So always get there five or ten minutes early. Because if the bus is out of sync, they don't always stop to make up. Anyway, that's enough of that. Enough about buses until later. Now that little tree I was telling you about at the start of this video, there it is. It's regained strength, I reckon. I reckon that is the one. Yeah, it might have done. It might have regenerated. Anyway, look, here's where the... One of the streams emerge here. Out of the hills. Out of this swallet here. Well, it's not a swallet, but... And, and it goes all down. All the way down into the fords. Down to Holford. And eventually out to sea. Probably passing near possibly Kilf. I don't quite know. But uh, as I've mentioned on other videos in the past, Coleridge and Wordsworth and Wordsworth's sister Dorothy walked here and they followed the route of this part of the stream. The babbling brook. So I'm, I'm now walking in Wordsworth country. He didn't stay here very long by the way. Why, in a way, they were handed out. They were seen as too revolutionary. When they stayed here, um, Coleridge was at ne North Peth um, Nether Stowey, and Wordsworth stayed down the road. There was a French Revolution going on. Now, people like Coleridge and Wordsworth and Dorothy were challenging culture and society and putting it in their poetry, in their ballads. So, you know, people are very superstitious, very nosy, very possessive. Uh, they, they weren't locals, you see, these two. So basically, these three, I should say, they were sort of seen as too political, I think, and uh, weren't encouraged to stay. Look at that. I think in a minute I might put my hat on. I can feel that heat now. I've got it right above my head, by the way. Now, I was stop, supposed to stop and have a drink then, wasn't I? And I didn't, and check the time. But what I'm going to do, there isn't a lot of shelter on this particular section. There might be a bit further down. And I'm going to stop, get my hat on and have a drink of water and check the time. But I'm not doing it yet. Every now and again you get a clump of purple flowers, like down there, that, I mean, I'll just zoom in. Um, might come out there, there, like that. I don't know if they're rhododendrons or anything, but um, they do brighten up the landscape a bit, don't they? You know? Of course, we are in adder country, by the way. I bet there's few adders listening to me as I'm walking along in there. Don't roam off into that lot. If you can help it, keep to a track. I don't want the viper to bite you. But I've been open to see an adder for years. I hadn't seen one since I was about 10 when I came up here with friends. There was one on the track over that way somewhere. I used to collect sheep bones when I was a kid. Take them home, my mum put them in a bucket of bleach. And I used to take them to school. And the teacher kept them. And she used to get me to teach the others all about bones. I remember that. She said, Sheila, you can teach others about all the different bones. Because I knew I was really interested in biology when I was a kid. You know, really interested in it. And I went on to be a science teacher, but uh, that's a different story. 
I'm still interested in all that really, but I haven't looked at a biology book or chemistry for a long time now. Because I'm a family historian now. I absolutely love it. But in the summer, family tree gets put on the back burner for a bit. While I'm out here doing, enjoying this lot. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Gorgeous. Let's see if we can see a snake. Can you see a snake anywhere? Sunbathing, Sheila? They can hear you and they bloody hide. Over and out for a minute.